All right, everybody, so this time what we're going to be looking at is how do we come up with names or formulas for ternary ionic compounds. Now, first off, let's consider some information about the names that are going to be really important for these compounds. If you identify the uh, name of the compound is ending in something like eight, that we see two examples of here, or if it ends in something like it, you know for certain that you're dealing with a ternary ionic compound. Now there are some exceptions to this. Uh, this is an exception right here. So what am I talking about when I say ternary ionic compounds? I'm talking about metal ions or an ammonium ion which is combined with a polyatomic ion so that we have three or more different elements combined to form an ionic compound. So let's consider this one right here. LiOH. So Li is lithium. That part's easy. I'll write that in. Now, if you're looking at your periodic table, you're going to look all over the place to find capital O, capital H. It's nowhere on the periodic table, and there's no such thing as hydroxygen. So, if you can't find it on the front of your periodic table, look at the back. Okay, it's on that reference sheet. It is a polyatomic ion. OH is something called hydroxide. Now, the charge of hydroxide ions are minus one. So lithium plus one, hydroxide minus one are going to combine in a one-to-one -one ratio. Let's look at our next example here. Magnesium nitrate. Now I need to figure out from the name how to write a formula. So I need to figure out some information about magnesium, some information about nitrate. Magnesium, we learned earlier, is an alkaline earth metal and it has a plus two charge when it forms ions. Nitrate is not nitrogen, okay? This is a polyatomic ion that is formed from nitrogen and <coughs> oxygen atoms being combined together. Now, nitrate, if I look it up, I'll find this information. It has a formula of NO3, and it's going to have a charge of minus one. Now, I can see if I put these together in a one-to-one -one ratio that I'm not going to produce an electrically neutral compound. I have more plus, I don't have enough minus. So I need additional nitrates. I would need two of them to balance the plus two charge of the magnesium. Now, how do I write this in a chemical formula? Mg, that's easy. I'm going to write NO3. Now, this doesn't make any sense. This would be a nitrogen with 32 oxygens paired with it. I need to use parentheses. Kind of like when you're doing this in math, the parentheses distribute this two to the oxygen and the nitrogen, multiplying. So this means I have two nitrogens and six oxygens, which are part of the two nitrate ions. Again, we can see one, two nitrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens. So the formula for this one would be MgNO32. Uh, finally, our last example is aluminum sulfate. Now, again, we need to use the periodic table. We find that aluminum is in that group that has a plus three charge. Sulfate, it's a polyatomic ion. You find it on the back of your periodic table, SO4, 2 minus is the charge of that. So once again, I need to find the common multiple of 2 and 3. Now there's another way that we can do this. It's called the crisscross. So I'm going to pull those numbers down and across from the charges. So I come up with Al2, SO4, I would need three of those. So the way that I would write a proper formula for this, I'll put it over here, would be Al2, SO4 in parentheses, followed by a three. Again, Al2, Al plus three, Al plus three, that's positive six. SO4, 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 each one has a charge of minus two. So that gives me a negative six. Put them together, we have a charge of zero. We have a neutral compound.